All right, good afternoon. Welcome. Uh, my name is Louis Jamel, like you said. I uh, work on our overall core methods and simulators and global simulator strategy at Ford. I just want to talk to you today about something that I think you know, is extremely important. It seems very straightforward and simplistic on the, you know, on the top, but it's, uh, it's something that's going to be needed to really advance this community into using simulators for more virtual development. So, you know, obviously as we grow this technology and build each of our companies up to do more and more virtual development, you know, how can we expand the scope and the accuracy of that, right? One of the, one of the next steps after you kind of look at your, your own self is to integrate your suppliers into your virtual ecosystem, right? And the reason I underline your is, you know, when you look at an ecosystem, right, the traditional sense you think of, you know, plants, insects, and ecosystem, but the more modern definition is, you know, a complex network of, you know, interconnected system, right? Simulators are many different pieces of software. There's many different things interacting, both hardware and software, to try to create the best representation of a real vehicle that you can do. So when you're developing, you know, or trying to get your suppliers involved, right, the first thing you actually have to do is look inward, right, to yourself. Develop your ecosystem is number one, right? To be effective, you have to create a very consistent and efficient way to bring all of your models together, whether they're subsystem models, getting your plant models correct, lining all that up, even related to hardware, uh, is a very key point because until you can get a, a system that works well, it's efficient and it's scalable and deployable, especially on a global stance, it's going to be harder to bring in suppliers that are now working with multiple OEMs, have many different interfaces, many different ways, and probably have started to develop their own little you know, versions of simulations on, on their subsystems and parts. So when you look at that, you know, just graphically, right, it's, it's, it's kind of crazy, right? You have many different, you know, softwares, you have many different uh, environments, you have many different pieces to the car. You know, I primarily work on vehicle dynamics, but I also partner closely with our ADAS team and other teams at Ford. And trying to bring all this together, even on an internal sense, is, is a daunting task, right? So the first is trying to look at hardware. So no matter what you're doing from a simulation standpoint, having hardware lined up is gonna be one key pillar to building a really strong ecosystem that's, that's consistent and deployable. So whether you're looking at a, you know, a desktop simulator or a static or a dynamic, you know, VI Grade's done a good job of lining up hardware, but even to the point of if you have a, a hill rig or anything else, trying to grab uh, a concurrent system for that or line up the, the real-time hardware is gonna be key because then as you bring in subsystems, you bring in hills, you bring in software in the loop, the way you integrate it is gonna be streamlined and more straightforward. So as you start to build this out, right, we all know plant model, driving environment, you know, we, we know that the plant model seems to be something that, you know, it's old news, but we have to keep thinking about that because until you get things like that correct, anytime you layer on top of that, you're still gonna have chances for inaccuracy, it's gonna be harder to bring in other, other subsystems, so getting, Getting a plant model aligned, whether you're using, you know, CarSim, VA Car Real Time, IPG, you know, VI Grade's done a great job. We've worked with them a lot on trying to bring in uh, other, you know, other plant model capability and your environments, getting your driving environments, whether it's in WorldSim, RF Pro, Unreal, AV Simulation, you know, but at least making that consistent to what you're trying to do is going to be the key message. So now the next step is once you are ready to start thinking about subsystems and suppliers inside of your own company, right, you still have to understand these internal models, right? So you're starting to build on, let's say, more uh, a higher fidelity suspension model or your own version of a plant model for a steering system or even your ADAS features. You start to develop those. As you bring those online and start connecting those, understanding how they're connected and making sure that that's consistent across the board is gonna be the next key step on making it easier and easier to then start to reach out to the suppliers, right? So once you kind of have that ecosystem built, which seems simplistic, but once again, it's, it's not as easy as it seems, then you're ready to start looking at supplier models. Now, as you go along your prototype phase, and you, you know, your virtual prototype phase, and you start building things out, you're gonna want more 
um, more detailed, higher fidelity models that a lot of times your suppliers are going to have, whether it's a damper supplier or working with a sub, uh, tire supplier to gain a, you know, a, a CD tire model from them. Once you, once you get to that level, then at least they understand what they're up against, right? You're working in, let's say, let's make it simplistic. You're working in a VI grade car real time. You know, you're working with concurrent Linux. They start to understand what they need to do to bring that to the table. But the key message inside of all this is the partnership, right? Keep going back to this, this growth mentality and partnering with suppliers. It brings them into your ecosystem from a, you know, a zeros and ones, but it also creates a partnership along the way that as you want to develop vehicles and start earlier in your prototype cycle, they're, they're part of that. Instead of waiting till they can deliver you know, a piece to you sometime later down the road, now they're part of that ecosystem early and you can bring them in at an earlier time to start working with them on concepts and target setting and things like that. And you'll have a, a, a better chance of having your concept brought to life sooner, right? So one way to get, to get some help right, is start leveraging our simulator partners like VI Grade. You know, I used that example before. Let's say your supplier is working in a, in a Windows environment or they're working on DSpace rig for Hill. You know, all of these type of things, VI Grade can, can work and try to help along with your OEM team on trying to integrate those pieces into your ecosystem, right? And your, yours may not be exactly what VI Grade sells right from the get-go, but at least if you're consistent, in what you're doing, then at least they have an understanding and your supplier has now the understanding of how to, to bring that together, right? So kind of a, a quick example. So let's say you're working with, you know, a brake supplier, right? And they have a certain ECU and a certain hill. Now they're working on, you know, working in a Windows environment, their libraries that they're providing for their software in their loop are Windows based. They may be having their hills integrated on a D space rig. So some of that's not exactly plug and play, VI Grade can work with them to help take some of the workload off of you and try to uh, work with them to create a, a, a conduit to then bring it in to concurrent Linux environment, get the libraries correct, help with the Simulink model, and gives you a chance to actually do your work versus spending time to make things work. What I've seen over the last six to seven years in the growth at Ford and what I've seen across the industry is we spend, you know, a lot of times people spend 50% of their time trying to make things work, trying to be at a model to work, because I can, and trying to get it work once, right? So having that ecosystem mindset will also allow you to deploy that. So let's say your team in the US creates something, it works, does it work everywhere, right? Can you deploy it to your European team, your China team, whatever team might be using it? That's what we're, we're trying to build and create. And that way you spend 10% of your time trying to actually get things to work and 90% of your time actually developing the vehicle. And that's, that's really a partnership between everyone, the OEMs, the suppliers, and the simulator, uh, you know, like VI Grade, trying to help bring that all together, right? Because once you develop that, then you worry less about what you're going to bring in and more of how you can use it, right? And that's, that's the key for, for taking this to the next level, right? So, you know, kind of summarize, the, one of the key advantages I see in this, and as I've grown and started talking to more and more suppliers as a Ford representative, is growing the partnerships. And 99% of the time when I reach out, they're excited. They want to get into the simulation more. They want to develop. But many of them, like, you know, if you look at Goodyear and others, have already purchased DEM 250s and other simulation tools. They want to be part of this growth, and they want to help. But until you talk to them, and until you try to, you know, work together on integrating what they're doing into your, your test and your ecosystem, then you, some, you know, sometimes you could have divergent paths. So I think having that communication is gonna be key and trying to bring them in as part of your ecosystem kind of forces that conversation. You know, and obviously it improves your overall accuracy, right? The more that you can bring in their models and the more you can work together, your end product is gonna be more accurate. You know, it allows for earlier development, as I said earlier. Now that you have your, your system set up, you can start developing vehicles, you know, years, months and years ahead of what you might be able to if you have to wait for some sort of physical interaction or for a supplier to bring something to the table. You know, and, it, and like I mentioned earlier too, it strengthens your own ecosystem, right? The stronger you become and the more consistent your company becomes around developing all of your tools that interact and work together, you're gonna to be that much faster, it's gonna be that much easier to, to bring in the suppliers, and it's just gonna help you in the long run, right? So I guess, 
you know, the, the key takeaway here is when you talk about supplier integration, it sounds like, yeah, it's kind of a no-brainer, it's obvious, but looking onto your own ecosystem, using VI grade to, to help if you're, if, you know, when you're working in that environment is really going to be the key for all of us to take the industry to the next level. Because the more that we all work on this together and the more that we can streamline these connections and the ways we work, it's just going to help everyone, right? And then we can go back to just developing vehicles and not have to worry about how to make simulation tools work, which is obviously what we all want to do.